anything I can do for you? You don't happen to have a small penknife or an axe? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, uh, may I use the end of your cigar? But what for? Ah, thereby hangs the table. <laughs> I left half of it in my room, and the keys with the porter. Perhaps my key will fit your door. Oh, <laughs> that's hardly like it. <laughs> but this is a continental hotel, you know. Ah, you've done me a great, a great service. <clears throat> now, if you ever need a little brimstone, I will come down and see you. You'll get a warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're not going to the carnival by any chance. Oh, no, no, no. And neither am I. <laughs> Carnivals are a waste of time. <laughs> A wicked waste of time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Absolutely. Hand over everything that's safe. Oh. 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 Mr. Arwood, you will have your little joke. A fine night for the fireworks, Ethelred. The fireworks? Oh, yes. Have you heard anything of the gentleman I'm expecting? Oh, no. let me see. Oh, yes, monsieur. That will be uh, Mr. Fennick. No, no, no. Phantom, Phantom. F E N T O N. It's very important. Uh, no, sir. We should be here by now. Uh, yes, sir. Did you make our reservations on the Riviera Express tonight? Oh, monsieur, we leave to the last moment. All I get is a two-berth sleeper, the last on the train. Okay, well, uh, what's the damage? Sixteen hundred francs. I'll toss you double in that. Oh, but, monsieur... Come on, come on, give me a franc, give me a franc. Oh, oh. Fail. Ted, you win. <laughs> I seem to be unlucky with tails tonight. Oh, monsieur, but never before in my life have I gambled. Never? Never, monsieur. Well, I won't be the first to push you on the downward path. I can't do it. Ethelred, I've saved you from a life of folly. From now on, my movements will be very uncertain, Ethelred. Myra, I beg your pardon. My sense of direction disappeared some time. That face seems distinctly familiar. Now don't tell me. It's coming back. I know. You're the fellow who emancipated my tail. <laughs> Any fellow who makes you... I mean, man, any fellow who pulls my tail out of the door is my friend for life. <laughs> this definitely calls for a little drink. Pardon me. What's yours? Is this any good? Huh? Silence means consent, absolutely. Say when. Say when. You've been drinking, sly dog. I'll give you a little tilt. It's the wrong bedroom. Which, in my experience, is always the right bedroom. <laughs> come on, come on! Drink! Ah.
Excuse me, are you in a hurry? Yes. So am I. Speed it up a little. Hey, you can't do that. This is a matter of life and death. You're pretty. You're drunk. Is that all? Well, since you've been so polite, perhaps you could tell me which is Mr. Harwood's room. Hmm? Oh, right over there. Did you say Harwood? Yes. Well, that's a funny thing. That reminds me of something. I'm Harwood. Here's my tail. Hey. Well, how do you do? I'm from the Worldwide Insurance Company of New York. Oh, at the moment, I'm fully insured, but you ought to clean up in this place. No, I'm supposed to meet you here. I'm Carl Fenton. I'm sorry I'm late. Fenton? Yeah. Oh. Why aren't you a man? The usual reasons. Well, why didn't you say in your telegram you were a woman? Never occurred to me. You can't be very observant. I just found a body. Really? You know, a body with a beard. All the best bodies have beards. No, no this is serious. I'm going down the hall to report it. Now, don't take this too big. I don't want to scare anybody, but I found a dead body in the room next to mine. A, a body? Uh, which room, sir? 210. 210? Oh. That would be part of uh, Monsieur Wagner's suite. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for telling me. I will have the chamber made. Take it away at once. This is on the level. Get the police. Fine night for the fireworks, Ethelred. Wise guy. Get me the manager. Is your name really Ethelred? Yeah. No. Oui, monsieur? A dead body? Where? Monsieur Wagner's room. I come at once. There. It's gone. The body's gone. The body's gone. Did you hear that? The body's gone. Monsieur will feel better in the morning. <laughs> he thinks I'm drunk. Tell him. He's drunk. I mean about the body. Well, I didn't see it. Listen. I belong to Taggart and American Detective Agency. I'm the European representative. Mr. Harwood must have his little joke. Am I or am I not a detective? I don't know. How do you feel about it? Now listen, I'm sick of this. I came here as a perfectly peaceable visitor. I find a body through no fault of my own and everyone treats me like a lunatic. A man was sitting in that chair murdered. I saw him. <laughs> well, Monsieur, if you'll excuse Get this. Me. I'm not leaving here until you call the police. Take my advice, forget it. Let's see. He was sitting there. I brought a drink down from that table. Well, mademoiselle, I don't think we sure will require us any longer. We have a train to catch. We have a train to catch. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir, monsieur. Exceptionally fine night for the fireworks. Hmm? Yes, isn't it? Mademoiselle? Next time I discover a body, I'll get it to sign an affidavit. We have exactly 15 minutes to get to the station. Station? Scotland. I can't go to Scotland like this. The Scots will never understand. We must catch that train. Lady Belton is expecting us. Melton? Lady Belton is the lady who's lost the jewelry that you and I have got to find. Does that penetrate? Oh, yes, I remember. You're snooping around for some insurance company. Ah, the alcoholic clouds are clearing. How long will you be? Like that. One minute to strip, one minute to dress. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, make it two minutes. I'll finish packing for you. Make it snappy now. Why did you come all the way to Nice to meet me? I waited three days in London, sitting on my hotel chair. Oh. Then I cabled your New York office. What did they say? They said there's only one way to get Harwood. Fetch him. I knew they'd speak highly of me. Um, have you got any spare underwear? Why, are you short? Try the top drawer.
Say. Yes? Why did the old dame send for a Tankerton man? Lady Belton is 100% American. Third husband, Lord Belton, first two disposed of by Tankertons. Well, I suppose we've got to go. But what an opportunity to miss. He's a perfectly good dead body and... This is a very commonplace world. Bodies don't disappear, and when a man has had too much to drink, he's drunk. Is that clear? Perfectly. There you are. Thank you. Oh, uh, have you got everything? Everything. Everything. Huh? Oh. Well, you forget her. I thought you were a man. I hoped I'd removed that impression. You have. Um, where are you going to sleep? Well, that's easy. Right here. Well, everything's taken. Where am I going to sleep? Oh, I don't care. Well, that's very sweet of you, dear. Uh, uh, just a minute. Uh, oh, uh, scratch my back, will you? Um, Can I do anything for you, monsieur? Yes, yeah, scratch his back. Oui, madame. Where, monsieur? Outside. Oui, monsieur. Hope you find crumbs in the bed. Well, I've always got the other one. F-E-N-T-O-N. F for fiddle. E for Henry. And never mind. T turtle. Sunny Padlon. Sunny Padlon. Long legs is right, but I can't help it. Oh, c'est vous, monsieur. C'est vous. Oh, non, non, c'est vous. Écoutez, si on savait seulement le nom, monsieur, peut-être on pouvait la trouver. Oui, peut-être la jeune dame américaine. Carl Fenton. Carl Fenton? F-E-N-T-O-N. Fenton, Fenton, Fenton. Oui, oui, oui. Oui, oui, oui. oui, oui. Oh, il est dans la chambre, à côté. Oui, à côté. À côté. À côté, si. 
Oh, you mean Cootie. <laughs> well, we left them wait. I've got to see her first. Bonjour. Uh, Mercy. Uh, fuck up. I mean, Voku. <laughs> Hello. Oh, why the face? What's the idea of not being hurt? You're disappointed. Well, you might have been hurt a little bit. How'd you come out? Well, I didn't quite come out, but uh, I was on my way. Ooh, how's your knee? Hmm? Pretty good. What are you doing? I'm looking up the trains to Scotland. In a 902 timetable? They've all got that by now. Get me the police. What are you calling them for? Curiosity. Get me the police. Well, that's service. Oh, uh, Monsieur Turbet. Nous avons pris le rapport du mécanicien. Oh, Monsieur Turbet, assistant prefect of police? Yes, I am. You've lost some of your property? Well, it wasn't exactly mine, although I did see it first. Perhaps Monsieur would explain. Well, my name is Harwood, of the Tankerton Detective Agency, New York City. Oh, very glad to see you, Mr. Harwood. They transferred him to Europe so they could get some work done over there. I know. The witty lady on my left is Miss Fenton of the Worldwide Insurance Company of New York, one of their major risks. <laughs> Delighted to meet you, Miss Fenton. How do you do? How do you do? Please sit down. Oh, thank you. You know, uh, Monsieur Turbet, I have a theory. I believe the Paris Express was deliberately wrecked. That's more than a theory, Mr. Howard. We have proof that the signals were tampered with. Have you any idea who did it? Not yet. The most difficult type of criminal to find is a madman without a motive. Mm. Always supposing he is a madman and hasn't a motive. Why do you say that? Last night at the Hotel Gallico in Nice, I found a dead body. You would bring that up. A body of a man with a beard. Later on, it disappeared. The beard? The body. After the smash, I saw that body in the wreckage. What? I'll swear I saw the same body twice. I don't doubt it. In my opinion, the murderer tried to conceal it. But why wreck a train to do it, Mr. Howard? What better place to hide a leaf than in a forest? Huh? And where is the body now? Fortunately, it was burned in the wreckage. Oh, very unfortunate. But leave it to me, Mr. Howard. In France, we work different to America. And you can rely on me. I shall leave every stone turned up. That's right. Don't turn down anything. I'll give you a little proposition, Mr. Turvey. I'll bet you $5,000 even that I catch the man who wrecked this train. You are betting me, Paul Turvey, $5,000 that you will catch this maniac? That's the idea. It's a lot of money, Mr. Howard. But how is it you say in English? Never look in the gift of a horses. Now, I know what you mean. Well, I accept. Fine, good. <laughs> I cannot talk any longer. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Howard. Goodbye. Oh, uh, I think we ought to start even. Clue number one. Pluck from the bearded body. If you will pardon me for turning up the first stone, come on. I'm making a great concession in letting you call here. Thank you, Carol. My name's Fenton. Thank you, Fenton. Sir? Good afternoon, Fenabessi. I'd like to see the gentleman who lives here. What name should I tell you? Oh, well, he wouldn't know it, but I think he'll see me if you tell him it's in connection with Wagner. Heinrich Wagner. Very good, sir. If you'll come inside. I'd like to. After you, little woman, after you. So you're digging up that body again, and you told me you were going to visit a sick friend. Maybe he is sick. Well, I'm going. No, you don't. Oh, yes, I am. Listen, behave yourself. I, uh... If you'll come this way, madam.
an old French custom. Oh, I hate disturbing you like this, but it's rather important. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I ran across a friend of yours yesterday, Heinrich Wagner. Oh, yes. And I gathered that he was on his way here to see you. Have a cigarette. Thank you. I don't exactly know how to tell you this, but... Uh... A light? Thanks. It may be a bit of a shock to you. Heinrich Wagner was on the Paris Express last night. Well? The train was wrecked. Wrecked? But Wagner... killed. Dear, 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 dear. I did not even know there had been a wreck. This is a great shock to me. Yeah, it was a great shock to us. It must have been. Particularly to... My wife? Oh, yes. Yes, wasn't it, darling? Oh, yes. <laughs> See, I'm afraid she's not quite herself. I spoiled her night's sleep, and uh, she's a little upset. How unfortunate. Poor Wagner. He was to have visited me here today. I was wondering why he had been detained. Of course, you understand he is only a business acquaintance. A friend of a friend. Oh, quite, quite. Nevertheless, it is not very pleasant to hear these things. <laughs> Will you have a drink? Uh, oh, no thanks, no thanks. No, no, he don't. It goes to his head immediately. <laughs> Doesn't it, darling? <coughs> yes, darling. Well, uh, we won't trespass on your time any longer. It was most considerate of you to come. I hate to spring it on you like this, but I thought it best to tell you. I am extremely grateful. Goodbye, Mr. Uh, uh, goodbye, and thank you. Thank you. That's a fine print you have there. Born is Irish race course, isn't it? Do you know South America well? Uh, no, not at all. <clears throat> I have taken this place furnished. Oh, uh, goodbye nice. again, and uh, thank you. Oh, goodbye. Thank you. You wear corsets? I do not. I thought so. Are you wired up in any way? What? Any hairpins? No. Why? I'm going to pick his lock. Pick his what? His lock. Tonight. All being well. All being well? We should be in Scotland by now. Roman in the gloaming with you, Fenton, appeals to me much more than breaking haggis with Lady Belton. Yes, but we... But gin a body, meet a body, especially a dead one. Something must be done. Hence, I'll have to bust into that gent's flat. Hence, you bust into it alone. Of course, this is a man's job. Oh, is it? Well, I'll go and find one. I knew I could count on you. tomorrow. Tell him to ensure with the worldwide. Tomorrow I'll be in jail.
gone. I did it, I did it. Oh, well, if you think you can scare me. Well, they're gone. Same in the bedroom. Everything moved. I wonder why that fellow wanted to get out so quickly. Maybe his lease was up. Fenton, I'll do the thinking. Five minutes past. Find our missing friend and we'll have the solution. To what? Hello. What's this? The Lord Mayor elect and the sheriffs of London request the honor of the company of Axel Hoyt and party. At dinner at Guildhall on Saturday, the ninth day of November, 1931. 1931. We're a bit late for the party. Well, we know four important facts. Our friend's name is apparently Axel Hoyt. Yes. His address was on Wagner's Cuff. Yes. He runs away. Why? I don't know. Because he thinks I know something. Yes. I'm going. Where? To Scotland. I'm sick of playing tag with a hangover. I am, though. I really am. The old place won't be the same without you. Oh, forget this wild goose chase and come with me to Scotland. It's getting a little chilly out there. After all, we are supposed to be doing a job together. What do you say? Let's sit down. What? Sit down. What was that? It's the neighbors complaining again. It was somebody shooting at us. He wouldn't fool me. Ethel Red, you were right. There was a body. It was put on that train. And all those people were killed just to... You're not going through with this. Of course I am, but I've got to get you out of here first. I'm staying. Oh, you're not. You're... Oh, you think I'm scared, do you? Well, you're wrong. I... Oh, Ethel! Are you dead? Yes. How do we get out of here? Well, they say an army marches on a stomach. Let's join the army. And then what? Find Axel Hoyt. Got a clue. You forget, Fenton. Axel Hoyt was at the Guild Hall five years ago. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we leave the most ancient room in the Guild Hall. Noting as we pass along the beautiful dark oak paneling on either side. See description and official guidebook. Obtainable from myself, price sixpence. Follow me, please. I gather round, please. Just gather round and I'll endeavour to explain. Now, hanging on the walls, we have a series of photographs of the annual Guild All Banquets for the past 15 years, from 1921 to 1935 inclusive. At these banquets, as many as 3,000 guests have been known to sit down to table at one time. <laughs> Follow me. The Guild Hall was rebuilt in 1411 and was damaged in the Great Fire in 1666, which emanated, as we know, from Pudding Lane and finished in Ficord. Now, this, of course, was before my time, but I might as well tell you that according to history, this old place originally was an old man. You see before you several handsome portraits of former London mayors, aldermen, and city officials. There is an amusing story told of the gentleman in the portrait now facing us, and known to posterity as one of the first Lord Mayors of London. It is related that as he was in the act of stepping from his coach, one of the horses, excited, by the occasion, reared up and stamped heavily into a puddle, splashing the mayor's robes and casting a cloud over his inauguration. Undismayed, he turned to his attendants and remarked, 
Is this how my worthy city greets me? A bon mot which not only saved an awkward situation, but caused him to be known ever afterwards as a man of ready wit and humour. And that ends our little tour today, ladies and gentlemen. In the course of my day's work, I walk three and three quarter miles, and I'm not due for pension till 1941. I thank you. <coughs> thank you very kindly. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> this way out, miss. <clears throat> Lock that door. Nice work. Nature and raw. 700 faces waiting to be fed. So that's a guild hall banquet. Look, there's a boar's head. No, that's the mayor. Look. Where? See that fellow? Yes. He owes me five dollars. Look at this. Wagner, before he was a body. Note the beard. Benton, the plot thickens. Axel Hoyt. In person. So Hoyt knew Wagner five years ago. Let's see what the others can tell us. Look here, Exhibit A. Strapping wench with come hither eyes. Definitely has style. Next to her. Who would you say would be in C? B, typical pillar of the British Empire. C, might be anything from a cabinet minister to a Portuguese sanitary inspector. It couldn't be that. It has no epaulets. Well, look here. Oh, definitely a personage. Member of the male sex. Obviously an untidy smoker. There you are, Fenton. This group is our only link to Hoyt. Question is, how are we going to trace them? Fenton, you're not attending. I'm studying the gown Exhibit A is wearing. Don't be feminine, I'm thinking. You better leave the thinking to me. A gown as smart as that one can be traced. Fenton, you're a genius. Madame, I can trace this very gown. The Maison Papette supplied it to um, Miss Elizabeth Wentworth, Grantley House, Buckley. Buckley? Yes, Buckley. A little village in the West Country. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cut that out. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's time for Lady Belton's telegram. What are we going to tell her today? Tell her the plane was delayed by the fog. What fog? The fog that delayed the plane. What plane? That's right. Oh. Is this the way you're going to look for Elizabeth Wentworth? Yeah. Well, where are we going to find her? Look. I'm delighted to see so large an assembly tonight. Of course, as you know, the proceeds will go to aid the funds of that splendid organization, the Pilgrims of Peace. It is a special honor to us tonight that the prizes would be presented by the president of the pilgrims, none other than our old friend, Sir Charles Webber. <laughs> who, together with our dear Miss Elizabeth Wentworth, <laughs> and her band of loyal helpers, are so soon setting forth on their voyage of charity and goodwill on the peace mission ship, the John Murdoch. Two birds with one stone. She's gone. 
She's sitting at the third table. She's going to play. Remember, please, the losing lady will move up. The losing gentleman will move down. The winning couples will keep their seats. That means the losing gent moves down, doesn't it? Which way is down? I'm a stranger here. That way. Good. And the winning couples keep their seats. I know. What did he say were trumps? Hearts. Hmm. And I don't think we need trouble to play this hand. Oh. oh. That makes me the losing gent, eh? It does. You move. Down. I know. Thank you. And I move. Up. Correct. I'll be seeing you. Well, I move down, eh? Yes. 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 Hey, you must be lucky in love. One moment, please. Have you ever played this game before? No. You know nothing whatever about it. That's funny. That's what they said at the last table. Now, you go down and I'll go up. Goodbye. All changed, please. Final game. Say, how are you doing? Fine. Won't be long now. There's my table. Mm. Goodness, this game's hard on your feet. And you what? Scram, scram, go on. Hearts are. Your cards. Yep. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you, how do, you do? <laughs> how do you do? Three points will make me safe for first. I've just been comparing notes with Mr. Crocker. <laughs> Excuse me, but haven't we met somewhere? I think not. If you play sensibly, young man, the pig is mine. I'll do my best. Your lead, I think. Let's see, what was it? Uh, um, uh, I've got it. Guildhall Banquet, 1931. Yes, I'm sure it was 1931. We had soup. I've certainly been to banquets at the Guildhall. You were with a business acquaintance of mine. Um, you know that fellow, the limp. What's his name? Uh, toy, uh, toy, uh, to Hoyt. Hoyt. Axel Hoyt. That's it. Young man, I only need three points for that sucking pig. Now, if there's any more talking, I shall call the vicar. I'm sorry. Funny thing, I, uh, I ran across Hoyt in Paris a few weeks ago. I think not. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure of it. You see, Mr. Hoyt died three years ago. Died? Yes, in the district. I was present at the funeral. Oh, you've dropped my ace! Where's the big one? No. Where's Mr. Penny? Please, please. It's a scandal! Oh, no, no, no. I only needed three points! I only needed three points! <laughs> Don't let your passions rise over a game of cards. Yes, but... Remember, Mrs. Forsyth, that life is not a highway strewn with flowers. I lost the pig. Then console yourself with the cask of cider. I won't. I won't. I want my pig. He's stolen my pig. No. He's in league with Mr. Crocker. It's all a plot to get no, my no. pig. <laughs> Who is he? I don't know. Says he saw Hoyt in Paris. Didn't you tell him Hoyt was dead? Yes. I wonder how much he knows. Yes. I wonder. You see, monsieur? Owing to the signals being reversed and to the curve in the line, the driver had no time to pull up. Then it was a deliberate wreck. Yes, that is my opinion. Have you any idea who did it? Oh, you will pardon me, monsieur, but that is what you call in English a 
leading question. May I say that the characteristics of this wreck are similar to those of the Bordeaux Express and Harvard Smash? Bordeaux? Ah, yes, positively. Uh, thanks. And the motive? <laughs> motive, motive. Who can say? I take it special precautions have been taken on every French railway. On French railways, yes. But a made man of this kind may turn up anywhere. Yes, of course. I... Well, thanks very much, Mr. Broadway. Good day. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. C'est marqué urgent. Urgent, voyons. Donnez-moi mon par-dessus et mon chapeau. Bien, monsieur. Voilà, monsieur. Merci. Ah, c'est américain. Nous partons en Angleterre. En Angleterre Mais où, monsieur First, I made a dead man who was alive, then I made a living man who died three years ago. There appears to be some minor oversight. Well, if you're trying to get a look at Hoyt's death certificate in here, you're wasting your time. It takes days of filling up forms. Leave it to me. You better let me handle it. No, not to it. Listen, I know. I was brought up in the insurance racket. I'll do it. Good morning. Good morning. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I came we here to make to an inquiry. Can... I'll do the talking. As a matter of fact... Yes, I... <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. I know. <laughs> There's no need to be bashful. Is it a girl or a boy? Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, a, 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 a boy. <laughs> Your first experience? Oh, no, no, no. We have a little girl as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Really? And what is the new baby's name? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, Hepplethwaite. Axel Stanislaus Hoyt Hepplethwaite. Well, that's rather strange. There was a uh, Mr. Axel Stanislaus Hoyt. Died in this district, you know. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Mrs. Hepplethwaite's hunk, uh, uncle, on, on, uh, uh, wasn't he, dear? <laughs> yes, on Mother's side. Yes. <laughs> so you're naming the new baby after him? Well, we want to, but uh, we're not quite certain how to spell Stanislaus. There are two ways of spelling it, I believe, aren't there, dear? Yes, there are. There's S T. Yeah, um, never mind. O dear. I'll or do the talk. No. Yeah, well, that's very simple. Oh, Pillweed. Yes, sir. Just bring me the index of deaths for 1933. Yes, sir. You know, the pleasantest part of my duty is the registering of births. Deaths depress me. Marriages, I, uh, I'm not so sure about. <laughs> but I always say it takes a birth to brighten up my morning. Uh, mm. Oh, thank you. Now then, height, 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 height. I've got it. Here we are. Oh, thank you. You know, dear, his death was certified by our old friend, Dr. Evans. He helped our little Henriette into the world. Remember, darling? Yes, we must look him up. Oh, yes. He's moved, you know. Yes, <laughs> he's at Bellevue now, just outside Bexon. Oh, really? Yes, I'll give you his address. Well, thank you. Uh, he's, uh, he's retired now. Yes, about, um, about three years, I think. Yes. Uh, he's, um, he's coming to money. I, well, well, I, so, so I understand. Well, there we are. Thank you. Well, well, I, <laughs> goodbye. 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 I hope this isn't the last time I'll be seeing you. Oh, hold yeah. on. <laughs> oh, you young people. <laughs> you young people. Oh. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye. 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 Good day. Is Dr. Evans in? Dr. Evans left the house a quarter of an hour ago to catch the train for Southampton. 
When will he be back? I don't know. It was very sudden. A telephone call. Does the train go direct to Southampton? No. The doctor left to change at Barwell. Barwell, thanks. Is he expecting? Can't say. He's a doctor. He ought to know. Come on. There she is. We've got to get the bar well before her. Are you sure you've got the brake off? Quit being funny. This is the only car they have in the garage. They must be doing over 100 by the smell. Hey, we're gaining. Good boy. What have you done to her? We must be going downhill. Got a level crossing. Talk to me while I'm driving. You make me nervous. Look. What? There's the lorry. I saw a lorry once in Pittsburgh. Yes, but it's right across the track. What? Yes, look. The train. Do something. <laughs> And before we could reach Dr. Evans, he was killed in the wreck. That's all. As Chief Constable of the County, the next move is yours. So I take it you're suggesting foul play? Suggesting? Well, I had that in mind. How do you suppose that motor lorry got there? Well, you see, it's like Oh, by the way, did my telephone call from South America come in yet? Not yet, sir. South America's a long way off, sir. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it is a long way. <laughs> well, about that lorry. When I was looking over the wreckage, I made a discovery. Yes? The license on that lorry expired ten days ago. So what? Well, it's an offence, you know. Of course, you're going to call in Scotland Yard. No, I don't want any interference from those jacks in office. Look! Hello, my friend. Monsieur Turbay. How are you, Monsieur my Turbay, friend? Turbay, I'm oh. fine, thanks. How are you? Come yeah. right in. Hello, Miss Hinton. Oh, this is a pleasant surprise seeing you. Yes, you are surprised to see me so soon. But the French police are very quick, you know. I have just come up from the wreck. All the time, I am only a step behind you. Well, I hope you haven't tripped. Well, oh, this is Captain Fitzgerald, Chief Constable of the County, Monsieur Turbay of the French police. I've heard a lot about you. He's been investigating that big French wreck I was talking to you about. Well, we should be glad of your assistance, though I have the matter well in hand. But he slipped. No doubt you have already found the striker. Come, come, Mr. Turbay. <laughs> Rome wasn't built in today, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, please. Wait, my friend. Oh, uh, sit down, please. Well, get us a drink. What? No, no, not you. Sit down. Let's have some drinks. Bring, uh, bring them over here, will you? Now, I'm sure that both these wrecks are the work of one man. Someone who wanted both Wagner and Dr. Evans put out of the way. Go on. Now, this man, Axel Hoyt, knew both of them. He also had a definite motive for bumping off Dr. Evans. Bumping? Oh, we bumped him. A fake death certificate fixed up by the doctor for him. You mean Evans knew too much? Sure. Probably Wagner did, too. It's my belief that they're all running some racket together. Oh, la, 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 la. My $5,000 are in danger. Oh. <laughs> well, are you putting out the description of this man, Hoyt? Certainly. What is he like? That is he. But until we know a little more, it is better to say nothing of the wreck or of the death of Evans. Certainly. Well, I must be getting back to the station. But uh, don't lose any sleep over this. We'll catch the blighter. <laughs> well, I must go too. I am following up a little idea of my own in London. Huh? Say, Mr. Howard, you played fair with me. I will do the same with you. How is it you say? Honesty is the best politics. 
Try the true. Come on. Let it go, let it go. Ah. Well, you recognize this? That's the link from Wagner's cup. Yes, which you gave me. Mm -hmm. Now look. They're exactly alike. But this one I found on the body of Dr. Evans a few minutes ago. Hmm. Have you any idea what this design stands for? Perhaps, perhaps not. But it might prove what you said just now, that they were both in the same tennis. Racket. Oh, I don't like it. Yes. <laughs> Keep it. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Your telephone call from South America, sir. Oh, thank you. Come on. This way, sir. It's along now. Hello? Hello, is this the Buenos Aires police? Can you hear me? Well, this is Harwood of Tankerton's here. Oh, is that you, Gonzales? Did you get my cable? Good. Say, listen. Did you get anything on Axel Hoyt? Fine. Fine, I thought you'd know him. Here, hold on, I'll take it down. Give me a pencil, quick. Gun running. What? Yes? All right, that'll do nicely. Thank you. Thank you, Gonzales. Thank you very much. Bye. Come on, now, don't be funny. Let me have that quick. Hey, look! That's what the cufflink stands for, don't you see? Pilgrims of Peace. So that's their racket. Yes. There's Lizzie. Yes, with her boyfriend. And all the other dogs. You take a look around. I'm going to stay here. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Charles Weber would like to say a few words. <laughs> My dear friends, no effort has been spared in this great endeavor by our people to bring relief to the oppressed victims of war. In a few moments, our little band will be en route for Bordeaux. We greatly appreciate the kindness of those who are seeing us off at the boat train. Miss Elizabeth Wentworth will be sailing with us on the peace ship from Bordeaux to organize the nursing staff. while Father Blanchard of Paris will come with us to take charge of the spiritual side of our mission. I myself will superintend the organization of supplies. Now, I don't want you to think that your task is finished. There he is. Who? Oh. The man who saw you in Paris. Yes, yes, that is the man. It rests with you to further the cause of peace at home until, by the very force of public opinion, disarmament, and by that I mean total disarmament, is brought to this war-weary world. That's all. Good speech, don't you think? American friend here again. Again? People bother us anymore. Are you a newcomer? 
in a way. Then you haven't heard my little poem. I dedicated it to the sailing of the peace ship. I'll recite it to you, if you like. No, no, don't bother. No, don't it's bother. no bother. I call it man. O oh, humanity in thy name, is such desecration wrought that thou must bow thy head in shame, blush at the very thoughts you... Oh, man. Oh, man, if you don't mind. Pilgrims awake. Dawn streaks are puffing. Throttle the war gods while they're sleeping. You throttle them, you wrote it. Strangle these pestilent puppets of fate. You strangle them. That fill simple souls with hate. Come here. Are these poets too? Uh, no, but there's a lot more yet. I see the clash of symbols right, cease. All right, all right. Follow me over here. Uh, yes. I, I see the clash of symbols cease. Humanity, renew its lease. A million voices whisper peace. Peace in our time. Perfect. Peace! Temper. The boys were only playing. Yeah, we might as well do this thing right. Take the pin out. Here you are, boys. There's something to play with. Who's the lucky fellow? Catch! that five thousand dollars you can stuff yourself sick you seem very confident mr howard don't tell me i know that voice well monsieur you see i turn up again so do i so do i well it looks like it's going to be a very interesting trip monsieur to obey yes and what's more i have two scotland yard men with me look they're outside oh, oh fine hey you think of everything don't you i will be honest i have not yet the evidence i've got plenty oh mr howard to suspect is not enough. You must prove. I tell you, I'm on the right track. Give me an hour, and I'll satisfy you that I've won the five thousand dollars. Very well, Mr. Howard. If you do that, I will be very glad to pay you five thousand dollars. That's practically paid. Good. Now, the moment I light a cigarette, you go and bring them in. Right here. Right. You mind if we join you, Sir Charles? How do you do, Miss Wentworth? I don't know who you are, sir, but we can join, please. Well, I see you've embraced the church since we met in Paris, Father Hoyt. My name is Blonstar. What's the meaning of this? Go away. I'm glad you're not Hoyt, Father. For he's wanted in Buenos Aires. Really? For gun running. Indeed. Yes. Boy came to this country three years ago. As you can see from these. The Argentine police got wise to the fact that he was in England and applied for his extradition. So Hoyt decided to die. It's well known that you can't extradite a dead body. But Hoyt needed a cover. So he found one. Something quite above suspicion. The Pilgrims of Peace. What on earth are you talking about? Listen to this cable from the chief of police of Bordeaux. I've searched John Murdoch. Cases aboard contain arms and ammunition. Await full information. Hello, Ah, Father. My good sir, if you imagine we are going to sit here and... All right. It's no use. What are you going to do? Nothing. At the moment, I'm not interested in ships. I prefer trains. Trains? Yes, Hoyt. I'm looking for the man who murdered Heinrich Wagner. Murdered him? And put his body aboard the Paris Express. 
This morning, Dr. Evans was also killed in the train smash. Evans? Two train wrecks, two pilgrims. Now listen, Hoyt. Whoever killed these men was someone who knew they were dangerous to him. Someone who had something to conceal. Someone who was in France at the time of the first wreck and in Barwell on the scene of the second. Someone who was the doc. Turvey doing with you at the guild hall? Turvey? Yes, Turvey. Why? There. He was on the same racket, wasn't he? Getting arms out of France for you. Why, for a high police official, it'll be easy. Turvey was on the scene of the French wreck and present just after the Barwell smash this morning. And he's here now. Here? Turvey on this street? Yeah. You mean he murdered Wagner and Evans? I'm sure of it. Did Turby try to back out? Yes, the French government got suspicious. So you instructed Wagner to exercise pressure. Wagner obeyed instructions and Turby killed him. But you can't win a war by wiping out one regiment. He had to kill the rest of you. But why? Because pretty soon you would have found out that he'd been double-crossing you. That the arms weren't aboard the John Murdoch. But the cable says the arms are aboard. Read this, Fenton, will you? Shall not require your services. Local policeman found jewels behind bars. Lady Belton. Why did he kill Evans? To throw me off the scent. Yes, but why did he give you those cufflinks? To get us on this train. He knew we'd follow it up. That's right. That's why he sent me the passport. Don't you see? If Turbey could wreck this train, he'd... Turbey wouldn't wreck a train he was traveling on himself. He might get off. Off a train going 80 miles an hour? This train isn't going 80 miles an hour. It's practically stopped. What? It has stopped. What's happened? Charles Weber, Miss Wentworth, and Father Blanchard, organizers of the Pilgrims of Peace movement, who were on their way to embark upon their mission, and two American citizens, Mr. Edward Harwood and Miss Carol Fenton. This week, a local train was derailed at Barwell in the West Country, and only the week before was the disaster which enveloped the Riviera Express in the south of France. In 
that case, it has already been established that the signals were deliberately reversed by some man or men whose ghastly trade is wholesale murder and butchery. Mr. Howard and Miss Fenton, it is now revealed, were unofficially investigating the other wrecks. You always were an untidy smoker. One naturally asks whether the malice of the wrecker was in this case directed against them. It seems quite certain that this latest of the same train smashed is not pure mischance. Investigation has shown that there was no flaw, either in the permanent way or in the rolling stock. Fifth of all, everything was done by staff and the approaching train. Perhaps within the matter of twisted and broken days, the work of rescue was carried on in the right of the whole of Europe is asking the same question. Who is the insane criminal responsible for these most ghastly crimes of our century? When and how will he be brought to justice? You again, so soon? Sooner. What is it this time? We want to get married. Married? The children insisted on it. Oh, that's right. Oh, you young people. <laughs> you young people.